Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about photochemistry and to start with we'll discuss Jablonski diagram. So photochemistry basically deals with the processes, the study of the processes that take place when light interacts with molecules. So what happens is that when this reactant R or the molecule is hit by some radiation, it is shifted to an excited state. Now this excited state can undergo different processes. The first one is the photophysical processes. What happens in these processes is that this excited state comes down to the ground state or the molecule in the excited state jumps down to the ground state with the emission of radiation. Now remember that the wavelength of this emitted radiation is usually longer than the one that was initially absorbed by the molecule. So these photophysical processes are explained with the help of Jablonski diagram and this is our today's topic. The second type of processes that these excited molecules may undergo are the photochemical processes. Now, the, during these photochemical processes, this excited molecule undergoes some reactions to convert to products. So these processes are explained with the help of photochemical reactions. This is not our concern today. We will be only talking about Jablonski diagram. In other words, we will be talking about the photophysical processes that an excited molecule undergoes to come down to ground state. But before that, we need to understand what spin states mean. So we have this molecule or the electrons in the ground state and we have labeled it as S0. And you can see that in this ground state, the spin of the electrons is inverted. So one of the electron has plus half state, the other has minus half state. Now when this molecule or these electrons are hit by some radiations, what happens is that one of the electron is excited to the first excited state or to the second excited state depending upon how much energy it has absorbed. So in this case, it jumps from S0 to an excited S1 state and we call it a singlet state. Why? Let's understand this with the help of a formula. So the formula to calculate spin states is 2s plus 1. S is the overall spin of the system. Now in this case this electron has plus half spin and this one should have the opposite spin that is the minus half. So the overall spin of this molecule is 0 and so 2 into 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 and that is why we say this is a excited molecule in singlet state or this electron has jumped to a singlet state. Remember during this process of excitation the spin of the electron does not change. Now in another case this excited molecule or the electron in this excited state may jump to another state which we call the T1 state. T stands for triplet state. So let's see what happens during this process is that this electron jumps from S1 and it goes down to T1 and see what happens is that the spin of this electron is now inverted. And this is a spin inversion process uh, when the electron jumps from S1 to T1 state and now this whole system is in triplet state. Why it is a triplet state? Because now the overall spin of this system is 1. You see both the electrons in, are in the same spin state so 2 into 1 plus 1 is equal to 3 so that is why we say this is a triplet state. Now this electron can also jump from S0 ground state to T1 directly with inversion of the spin uh, but it can also jump from S1 to T1 uh, through, uh, through a process that we will discuss in a couple of minutes. So now you know what spin states mean. 
Now let's discuss Jablonski diagram. So we have these electrons in the ground state, in the S0 state. When these electrons are hit by some radiations, so energy is provided in the form of light and what happens is that one of these electrons jump from S0 to say the S2 excited state. And remember that spin of the electron does not change during this process. This process of jumping of this electron from S0 to S2 is known as excitation and this happens because of absorption of energy from the light. This electron in the excited state can undergo different processes. Now let's see what happens to this electron. We will discuss the fate of this electron in the excited state. So this electron jumps from this lowest vibrational state of S2 to a higher vibrational state of S1. These dotted lines show the vibrational states of each of these energy levels. These are the vibrational states of S0, these are the vibrational states of S1, and these are the vibrational states of T1. So this S2, uh, electron in S2, jumps to a higher vibrational state of S1. And this process is known as internal conversion in which the spin of the electron remains the same and it jumps from one excited state to another excited state uh, with a higher vibrational level. And see the spin of this electron remains the same. This process is known as internal conversion in which the electron jumps from one energy level to another energy level of the same spin state. From here, it has to go down to S0, but this happens in uh, different steps. So it is in a higher vibrational state of S1 now. It will try to come down uh, to a lower vibrational state of S1. And this process is known as vibrational cascade. See, it has not changed its energy level. It was in S1 here. And it is still in S1 but in a different vibrational level. Here it was in a higher vibrational state or vibrational level. Now it is in a lower vibrational energy level but in the same energy level as uh, before. So now it's in the lowest vibrational level of S1. From here it will jump to S0 and so it will go down to the ground state with the emission of radiation in the form of fluorescence. So this electron which was excited by absorption of energy from light to S2 has come down to S0 going through different processes and at the end emitting radiation in the form of fluorescence. But this is not the only way it comes it may come down to S0. This electron in the lowest vibrational energy vibration state of S1 may cross over to a triplet state and you can see that the energy of the S1 and T1 is different. T1 usually has a slightly lower energy as compared to S1. So what happens is that this electron will cross over from S1 to T1 meaning from a singlet state to a triplet state. And What should happen is that the spin of this electron will change but it will end up in a higher vibrational level of T1 because T1 itself has slightly lower energy than S1 so this electron will go horizontally and will end up in a higher vibrational level of T1. Now this process in which the spin of the electron changes when it goes from S1 to T1 the spin should change and this process is known as inter-system crossing. So it goes from one system to another system or you can say that it goes from one spin state to another spin state and during this process the spin of the electron changes and now you see that it is in the same spin state as this one. Right? Now it's in a higher vibration level of T1 so it will go down to the lower vibration level See, the spin does not change, but it changes its vibrational level in the same T1 excited state. 
and this process again is known as vibrational cascade as we discussed here. From here it will jump to S0 and to do so you, it is going from T1 or a triplet state to a singlet state. So when it jumps from T1 to S0 its spin should change again. So you see that when it jumps down to S0 its spin changes and this process of jumping of the electron from T1 to S0 with the inversion of spin is known as phosphorescence. So again energy is emitted in the form of light in this case. So the electron has come down to S0 ground state again. What Jablonski diagram tells us is that when an electron is excited to a higher uh, energy level it goes down to the ground state through two different processes. One type of these processes is known as the non-radiative processes, the other processes are known as radiative processes. And as you have seen earlier, the non-radiative processes are the vibration cascade, internal conversion and intersystem crossing. Which means that during these processes, light is not emitted. But what happens in radiative processes, that is the fluorescence and phosphorescence, is that light is emitted. And this light that is emitted in these radiative processes has a longer wavelength. A longer wavelength means lower energy. So where does the rest of the energy goes that is used up in these processes in the, uh, uh, or it is lost as the vibrational energy. And this uh, shift of the wavelength from shorter excitation wavelength to a longer emission wavelength is known as the Stokes shift or we say that uh, we call it the Stokes law. The energy difference between the emitted light and the absorbed light is because of the loss of energy during these non-radiative processes uh, which we call the vibrational energy loss. So this is all about Jablonski diagram. This is the basics of uh, photochemistry. So if you can, if you understand Jablonski diagram, you can go ahead and uh, solve uh, several problems in photochemistry. Thank you so much for watching.